Hi, welcome to Obrew. My name's Craig Morris, and I like beer. And today we're in the downtown Canton Arts District. And today we're gonna stop in and see what they have in store at the Muscalunge Brewing Company. This episode of O Brew is sponsored by Beer and Ale Traveler. They'll drive you to drink in style. Let Beer and Ale Traveler plan your next brewery or winery tour. Choose from their pre-planned tours or sit down with Rick to customize a tour for your group. And remember, you don't have to drive yourself. Ride in comfort in their limo type bus with two flat screen TVs and a rockin' sound system. Need transportation for a concert, birthday, or bachelorette party? Whatever the occasion, call Rick to set it up. Welcome to Obrew. Joining us in this segment is Frank from the Muscalunge Brewery. Frank, thanks for having us here today. Very nice place you got here. Thank you. In downtown Arts District, I, I'm sure you can't wait till summer till all this snow goes away and beer goes a flowing down the streets of Canton. Of course, in containers. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a little history lesson and tell us, uh, you come from Puerto Rico, correct? Yes. How in the world did you end up in Canton, Ohio, from Puerto Rico? Well, I moved to Cincinnati in 2004. I was hired by this company, pharmaceutical company. My career is a pharmaceutical company. And then in 2009, I made my girlfriend, Carla. And the uh, small story is that we were uh, at Jungle Gyms in Cincinnati, and so she disappeared. And I found her in this tiny, tiny corner, and she told me, Hey, this is where all this good stuff are located. I said, what, what about that? And she said, yeah, this is for making beer. And I was astonished. I, I never passed on my mind that I can make my own beer. So she started explaining to me all the details. And then the short story is that I came the uh, next week, start buying my ingredients and grape and granary and start a home brewer in 2009. And then I found that basically the same thing, you know, making beer versus pharmaceutical formulation are basically have a lot of things in common. So I kept working out my learning and eventually, well, I apply all the uh, science uh, of pharmaceutics into home brewing. And eventually I end up a, uh, here in 2016, I decided to move uh, here to start the brewery. And here I am, I mean, probably two years, three years later, probably a little bit more than that, uh, in this brewery. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Your motto here is what? My what? The motto, inspired by nature, created by science. Okay, yeah. That's where the motto exactly. is underlined there. Exactly. So okay. it's inspired by nature because I started fishing when I was four years old and as a kid I was really amazed how fish can breed underwater when I can't. So when I started going to school, start learning the biology behind I was really amazed, you know. And then crested by science because I use all the science that I use on a daily basis to make generics products okay. into Home brewing, and then when I just mix both the principles of home brewing science and pharmaceutical science, as this all this concept of crafted by science came up. Okay, what you named your brewery? I read in your on your website that this fish is very very smart. Could that be why I can't pronounce it very well all the time? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, you, That's the real name, Moscow lunch. People call it the Muskie as a nickname, but the real, real name is Muscalunch. It's quite really impressive. Well, name. that would have been easy for me to say. <laughs> Muskie, I can say that. But no, I, I, it said this fish was smart. So I just figured if the fish was so smart, they, you couldn't catch it. Well, it depends on the lake that you are. Uh, uh, if there's a big population of uh, Muskie, you have a higher probability of getting one. Okay. And you named your beer all after fish. Yes. 
Just I start fishing on what it's for. And maybe you're a little kid and start fishing, you know. I still remember today the first time that I went with my grandpa that we start getting this big catfish. So I have the vivid, vivid image uh, in my mind of when that happened. And after that, I kept going fishing with him basically every week. And then so fishing for me had been my favorite sport. And then when I f first time met the mosque uh, in the books and one time I was able to see it live, I said, wow, this is a beautiful fish. And, and I had to say, hey, if I some days, you know, uh, star brewery. I'm going to name it after a muskie. So fishing and beer go together. Who would have yeah. thought? I mean, I think beer goes good with anything, but what do I know? Frank, what kind of food do you guys serve here? So I serve most of snacks and popcorn. Recently, I got to deal with old school, old, school, old school pizza and we can take the order here and they have free delivery. So I don't want to get into the, uh, uh, the legalities of making food. I want to concentrate on making beer. So I got a nice deal with these people. So you can stop by here, order it, and they deliver, free delivery. Now, do you have, do you fill growlers, that type of thing? Yes, I fill growlers. Okay. Yes. So as far as beers are concerned, how many beers do you have on tap right now? I have 12 beers on tap. 12 beers on tap. You started out, you had just a few to get started, and then you've built it up to 12? Yeah, so I started with six beers when I opened in June 2018, and I kept adding more beers. And I have right now approximately about 30 beers registered with, with the state, so I just keep rotating beers. Keep. There are beers that are fixed because people, you know, start, uh, keep asking for it, like the Walleye Colch and the Cream Ale, the Double IPA. So there, there are beers that are fixed and I always have it on tap and the other ones I just rotate. Do you have any outside distribution or any plans on doing anything like that? Yes, yeah, so I'm working on that right now. I have a, an account in Porter's Lakes Brewing Company. And uh, right now uh, they're serving the rye IPAs, the Bofin rye IPA. So this one that we're drinking is the, the rye? That is the, uh, it's a Brown Farrell uh, Roggen beer that is a half a bison, half a bison beer with rye instead of wheat. So it's a half a bison yeast with rye and Munich malt. Okay. Frank, explain your, your brewery system to us. I mean, you, you're a one man operation. How can a one man operation continue on thriving that way? I mean, what do you have that makes it kind of user friendly to you? Well, the first thing is that I designed it completely myself. So if I purchase a prepackaged system, something happens, I have to rely on someone else to fix it, but I put it completely together myself. Well, it's a lot of work to design this system. Um, and it's a hybrid, this uh, combination of gas and electric. It's a two barrel okay. system. And uh, uh, with two barrel fermenters, plastic fermenters. And then I built, I uh, included my own glycochiller with air conditioning units. So I went out there and get for 40 bucks each and they just put it together and it's working. So your glycol so units are air conditioners. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. And then a, I um, have an inline electrical heater. Uh, it's a, uh, I think it's 220 volts, uh, watts inline heater. So I maintain my mash temperature in the right spot all the time. And then a, uh, so basically that's what it is. It's a system that I just built together myself, you know. All right, Frank, in, in association with the brewery, where is the brew house located? The brew house is in the basement. So I have here, as we are right now, is a tap room. So the entire space down here, a thousand square feet is a brew house in the basement. And then the other side is another thousand square feet for storage. So in total, you have 3,000 square feet. And you also sell some malt, some rye, some hops, and stuff yes. like that too for the home brewing kits. Yeah, exactly. So I have a small home brew store here. I started really, really small with basic ingredients, not equipment yet, uh, to encourage people you know, to engage in home brewing. And also I plan in this coming spring or March, depending on weather, to start home brewing school here. And then, you know, 
bring a group of people, make the beer from start to end, and meaning, you know, I'm gonna pitch it, I'm gonna wait, we're gonna come back and taste the beer. Okay. So it's the entire process from, you know, adding the malts, you know, doing the boil, put it into the fermenter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then once it's ready, we're gonna come back here and taste it. So that is my plan. So I can encourage people just to get into home brewing. And you know, you always have that one person in that home brewing class that does nothing but want to drink, right? Well, but <laughs> you, you can take care of that too. Exactly. All right. All right. So after we get all this under our belt comes the fun part of the show. Um, it's trying your beers. Okay. And I'm looking forward to it. Let's go give it a whirl. Okay. So. Favorite time is upon us and we're going to try the beers. Frank, let's get started. This okay. is the fun part of the whole show, right? Absolutely. Well, let's boogie down. Okay. Where are we going to start? So we're going to start with a walleye colch. Okay. Uh, the beauty of the walleye coach, I call it the jewel of my crown because uh, I use a uh, hardcore science to get this beer. I use statistics. So I use a... Uh, so you're an analytics brewer? Kind of. Okay. That was a lot of work. So I blend four different malts, different ratios and the tastings and then end up with this recipe based on the... Uh, the model that I got from my statistical software. And it's the same recipe as my cream ale uh, that is a, uh, a corn-based beer. So uh, this is my, my favorite beer, my, my child, I will say, my child beer. Alcohol? Was that? What's the alcohol in this one? 5%. 5%? 5%? Uh, tasting profile would be? Very light, it's a German ale, uh, one of the few German ales that you can get. It's very light, close to a Miller's or a Bud Light or something like that. Crushable. But, but it's, a, uh, it's an crushable. ale. Okay. But it's an ale, it's a very refreshing. Uh, people just love it. It's the beer that I have 100% all this time. I have to have it because people always ask for it, so. So it's the number one in the clubhouse, in other words. Yeah. All right, where are we going next? We're going here to the Christmas Ale. This one? Yep. Christmas Ale. Christmas Ale, my inspiration. Tell us why it's so dark. Well, it's a bock. So it's a traditional okay. bock, a spice bock. And I was inspired by Sam Adams' Winter Lager. So as a home brewer, I was just fell in love with that beer. And I said, I want to make a beer like that. So a, uh, I... I'm certain that I got it, so. So Frank's take on Jim, <laughs> the Sam Adams man. Yeah, Jim Cock. <laughs> yeah, I'd take a bath in that stuff. He probably wouldn't though. Sam Adams. So, what else am I tasting in there? Oh, you're tasting uh, clover, cinnamon, different spices that I added here with the help of uh, 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 Denny, Dennis Smith from the SAS group. He helped me out with the spice uh, of this beer. Okay. Far as, is that in your first six beers that you created no, here? No, no, no. It's one of the, the later ones. The later one, correct. Okay. Uh -huh. This is one of my first beers, a Colch. All right. Where are we going next? We're going to the Honey Nut Brown. Honey Nut Brown. One of my first six. And, and this, somebody told you to make this. Yeah, well, uh, I just tasted a, uh, the uh, other beer that have a lot of honey and said, wow, this is very good. So I just came up with this recipe, have 15 pounds of honey per barrel. So that's a lot of honey. And you can tell very much so. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> it's very popular. You can taste the honey. Just mother nature right there in the tongue. Yeah. Very good. Very good. 
Last but not least. The last is the Grass Picaro IPA. This is one of my first beers that I just served when I opened it and I brought it back. It's a very grassy, nice flavor profile of mosaic and citra, very well balanced, and the malt, a specialty malt. This flavor profile just blends very nicely. It's my favorite beer right now. So you put this in the, in the mug, the big mug when you're making beer? Yeah. And I can understand why. That's a very happy beer right there. Oh yeah. We could keep drinking it and that's a problem. And make <laughs> Craig smile for at least a couple weeks too. Very good. Very nice. Do you have a story for us? Uh, yeah, as I told you in the beginning, the walleye, it is my child beer. Uh, uh, I use, uh, there is a, in statistics, there is a tool called Mixture Experimental Designs. Uh, I'm not going to go to the details, but it's a tool that you use to set up specific proportions in a planned way so you can actually draw a, some kind of line between the different trials. And then I spent a lot of hours just making the different blends with four base malts that I used and I make a two gallon batch each. So I make eight of those different proportions. And then I spend some time uh, uh, making tastings. So I just invite my friends and say, okay, uh, uh, just evaluate flavor, aroma, hoppiness, etc. And then I got a rating between zero and 10 scale. And then this number, what I did is that I plugged into the software and the software just drew for me this nice mathematical probabilistic model. And the software told me, hey, there is a high probability that you're going to find what you're looking for here. And this is exactly the blend that I use. And I end up with this, a, uh, uh, this beer. The funny thing is that if, if I go to probably a school, or I'll call to, uh, talk to a statistician who's burning the stakes because I violated so many rules. A statistical rules are probably going to be invalid in academia, but the good thing is that I end up with something useful that's really important. So there is absolutely no way that I can up end up with this beer by trial and error. Okay. And that's the beauty of that tool. It's a lot of work, but at the end of the, way, the day, it's really worth it, uh, the, the work that you put on that. So, so full analytics beer brewer. Yeah. That is so cool. Frank, it is very nice to meet you. It is very nice for you to let us hang out and talk a little beer. I've learned a lot today, so much appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. thank you. All right. Patron section of the program. Joining me right now is Gary. Gary likes to drink beer here because he depends on Frank the brewer to help him out a little bit. So you're somewhat a novice with craft beer? Oh, absolutely. And I, I've drank a lot of craft beer, but uh, this is probably my favorite place to come. You know, Frank always makes a good beer. You can ask him any question you want, he always gives you a good answer. You know, a novice like me, I need the basics, and, and it's always good. You yeah. need the basics. Well, did, did you start out and he like coerced you into to drinking better stuff? He always has a good suggestion, for sure. But, okay. but and this I, I've, is, always, I've tried just about everything now. I've come in here a lot. So so you've tried everything. So Pretty much. It, I was here earlier today, and it, we're talking 30 beers. So you've hit them all? That's, I'm, I mean, about that's 30, pretty, I'm only about 30 beers. No. That's, oh, that's, no. That's, oh, that's, I, don't want, I don't want to scare you. But, no. <laughs> but what beer are we drinking right now? This is the uh, Roggen beer. Roggen beer? Yeah, very good. I had it earlier today. What do you think? Excellent. Good, good flavor, good taste. Absolutely. And you come here mainly for beer. Sure. And the rest is just good stuff after that. Why else would you come here for, but for beer? Hey, there you go. No better explanation than that. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We are still talking to the patrons, and these people here were like the first in the door when this place opened, which is very cool because you know that they are 
regulars. Yep. <laughs> and they know what's happening in places like this. So who am I talking to? Sean Houghton. Sean and? Peggy Kelly. And? Eva Houghton. All right. So they know about the pizza that's delivered by? Old school pizza. Old school. Yes. Old school. Yeah. I'm old school. Are you old school? <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, are you regular Converse or old school Converse? No? Right. No? Yeah. Old yeah. School. You're a Browns can... fan. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're very I, old school. I'll give you, I give you a tip about them. They're, they, went to, they went to school in New York to learn how to make that pizza the way they They did? The right way, yeah. So it's the, it's the husband and wife and the brother, the woman's, uh, the wife's brother. They run the place. So okay. they, they opened it up with the brick oven pizza, the brick oven, the, the, so they could do it the right way in there. They got great pizza. All right. And you guys, like, this is your tradition on Thursday nights? Well, about once or twice a month. Once or twice yeah. a month? Yeah. That's very cool. I, I come down when they, uh, a friend of mine has a game night here, too. Board, old board games and okay. new board games, too. Yeah. And I'm down here now and I'm with them. All right, now let's get to the brass tacks. Let's talk beers. Oh, an IPA. It's you got the, an IPA? Uh, it's the uh, what? Uh, pickle IPA, I think. It's okay. The grass pickle. The grass, the grass pickle. And you? I'm drinking the DIPA. Okay. Which I and think is the best I've had best. in Ohio. <laughs> and you guys don't vary from tradition. Like what you like is what you like. You don't try new. Oh no, I try. I you try, try them all. I try all of Frank's beers. Very good. Because I like just about. You know, well, I'm not so hip on Bach, but I, I like just about anything else. I like the stouts very much and I like IPAs. Bach. Okay. I like his his Kolsch is very good. And you don't see that very often on a lot of taps, especially a lot of homebrew taps and, okay. and uh, microbrew taps. Uh, so you're here for the food, here for the beer, and it's get and you Frank, out of the house a couple yeah. times a month. And Frank, we're friends with Frank and oh. Carla, too. So. Well, Frank and Carla, they go along with the place, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, that works out just perfect. So thanks, y'all, for joining us, mm -hmm. and uh, enjoy here. Spread the word. All right. <laughs> He's a great brewer. All right. More patrons here. And uh, joining me this time is... Matt. Matt, what's your last name? You have a last Steed. name? Steed. Steed. Yes. Matt Steed. And yours? Joshua Riffier. Okay. And yours? And, uh, Sean Nolan. And how'd you end up here? Thirsty. Thirsty. There was a sign somewhere that said thirsty. <laughs> be -de -be -de -be -de -be. Show up right here. You uh, told us about this place, actually. I did, yeah. So. You I get all the credit, no I, blame. I kept riding my bike pass, and I said, I gotta go in there. All right. And I came in, I met these two, and here we are a year and a half later. Keep coming back. A year and a half? <laughs> Something like that. It took you a year and a half to bring these guys in? Oh, no. No, no we, we started coming quite a few times. Oh. Yeah. So, one of them, if your bike, he rides on the back, and you're in the sidecar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's cool. We got that out of the way. Pegs. Yeah, all right. They're on the mm -hmm. pegs. Yeah. Beer. You like beer? Love it. Yes. And that's why you're here. And what beers are you drinking? And start with you. So this is the new Russian Imperial Stout from the uh, fermenter. fermenter. That was not oh. quite done, but it's already really good. So you you must be a friend <laughs> after a year. Yes. <laughs> so he gauges it on 12 month cycles. His friends. Yeah. And you're over a year. Good beer. Yeah. All right. Same thing, the uh, straight from the fermenter. All right. Now, I know that I'm older than all of y'all. Okay. What did you drink first? What was your first beer that you drank? That I could find in my parents' fridge. Um, <laughs> How could you not remember that? Are you talking about 21? No, I'm before. talking stealing, I've like out of the more about the out of the garage refrigerator um, or Coors Light. I got it. Red Dog. Red Dog. That's old. That's the 90s. Uh, that's Miller beer. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Coors. And obviously, you men have graduated since then. Now I become the elder statesman, and I thank you for drinking craft beer. Hey, thank and you. Thank you for being on Obrew and joining us here today. 
Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Obru. And we'd like to thank the Muscalunge Brewing Company for their hospitality. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Beer and Ale Traveler. And remember at Obru, we're always in search of Ohio's finest beers.